Hallelujah. I'm just going to talk on the topic today. Do it right. Amen. Do it right. Hallelujah. When we hear do it right, that means that somehow things have been done in ways that are not right, in ways that are not proper. And what brings such things is when we don't do things according to the lay down instructions, according to how the manual is. When we don't follow the instructions of the maker, the instructions of the inventor, instructions of the first person that starts whatever we need to follow, we will not be able to get it right. And for that reason, at times we experience failure. We experience unsuccessfulness. We experience things that we don't want to experience and we are sudden in our heart. But we should remember one thing, that the plans and the program for us are always good ones. So it would help us to come to the expected end. Yes. So each time that we don't come to the expected end, it's not because the programs and the plans of God are not right for us. It will only be because we have not followed it the way it should be followed. It's the same thing we make mistakes day in, day out because we make ourselves not to comply to instructions. And each time we don't comply to instructions, we bring sadness and unjoyfulness and unhappiness into our own heart, into our own mind. The problem here is that we always blame other people. And this is not what it should be and how it should be. We always have somebody else to blame for what we are not doing right. And when we do like that, we will continually experience the same cycle of failure. Taking responsibility is very uppermost. Even in what we are discussing today, talking about salvation, talking about evangelism, it's an act of responsibility on the part of a Christian. And evangelism is not asking somebody to come to church. Evangelism is turning somebody to Christ. It's called the call for salvation. The first thing is not if you come to church, the first thing is do you know Jesus Christ? That is the basic of what we are learning, the basis of the church, the basis of our existence in this world. Because we've come to know that Jesus, that is the world interpreted, is the world that forms the whole world and the whole earth. So for us to be able to live our life well as Christians, or to be able to bring one to enjoy his life or her life in this kingdom, we need to first of all make that person to know Christ. And that is what is called evangelism. Do you know Christ? Have you heard of Jesus? Do you fellowship with Jesus? Do you fellowship with God by the Spirit? This is the first question we ask. It is when the person says, yes, I have given my life to Christ. I belong to God. I know Jesus. I know God. That is when I will not ask, which church do you go? Do you understand what we are saying? That is what is called evangelism. Why am I spelling it out so that we will know how to do it right? Let us not assume, and of course in so many ways we do assume that because we are Africans and it's always kind of the belief that all Africans, all mostly Nigerians, we have been exposed to Christianity in one way or the other. But I've come to Europe to know that that is not the case because few people that belong to this church started attending this church, attending church first here in Europe, here in anointing of God ministry. They never attended church all their lives in Nigeria. I have an example. She's not here today, I would have pointed to her. Hallelujah. But those who have been here for long, they know that testimony. Where the daughter will always test me. The daughter was two years old. I think now she's about 10, 15 years or so. We always send me a test. And then I will call the mother. And the mother will say, ah, I didn't test you. We come to realize that it was the daughter that was always using the phone of the mom 
to contact me. And it was so funny, how is it, which was the testimony of the mother, I don't know about Sister Fanny, we all know that. How is it that Susanna only tests me and not every other number that is in her phone? Each time, it could be a week or two weeks, but when she picked the phone, she will test Pastor Richard. And the mother does not understand. I say, yes, I've been telling you, give your life to Christ, come to church, and your daughter is just, my God is using her. She's not my angel, she's not, not my amount peace to talk to you. And that is how she come to church. And she said, do you know what? I've never been to church before. And that is why she said, nothing will take me from here. I come, I know come, I belong here. Because this is the first church that I've ever attended to call my own. It came from evangelism. It came from me talking to her and the Holy Spirit making it possible for her to be able to come. That is why we shouldn't relent because God has so many ways, as long as you are sincere in your evangelism, God will bring them. God will bring them. When your heart is indeed doing that right which God has asked you to do, they will be convinced. Amen? So, in a nutshell, like I have said, evangelism is not asking somebody to come. Evangelism is, have you given your life to Christ? When the person has given their life to Christ, then the beauty, the grooming will not happen in the church. And that is why we say the church is a workshop. The church is a workshop. Everybody comes the way we are. Dirty, crumbled, battered, whatever, whatever, with different kinds of belief. But when we enter here, we learn how to what? Do is right. And that is what we are going to talk on and talk about today. Let's open to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs four from three to seven hallelujah because there is no time that you want to do something right when you are not acquainted with the instruction of what you actually want to do what you want to accomplish you have to follow the instructions that talk about that thing that you want to accomplish before you can be able to accomplish it well we are going to use a case study of when david was to bring the ark back to Jerusalem. What he did before and what happened when he followed instruction. But let's read this. He said, for I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, let thy heart retain my words. Keep my commandment and what live. Get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all your getting, get understanding. Now, it is mainly talking about two things here. Wisdom and understanding. And the third one is silence, which is knowledge. Knowledge is spoken out in a different form here, which is saying that he taught me also, for knowledge is information that we gather. Knowledge is instruction. When there is no knowledge, there cannot be wisdom or understanding. It is when knowledge is understood, that is when wisdom can be applied. Wisdom cannot be there when the knowledge is not there. So when he says, I was my father's son, that means there must be a connection of sonship, a relationship that goes beyond servanthood, that goes beyond just doing things, that extend to the heart, to knowing the will, to knowing the mind. Jesus Christ at the age of 12 was sought by his parents. And when the parents, they found him, they said, son, why did you leave us? Staying in the temple and talking to the priest. He answered them, he said, why are you worried about me? Don't you know that I will be about doing my father's business? It is when we take the business of our father as our own. That 
is what is called sonship. When the will of our Father become our own will, when we are walking together in unity, that is called sonship. Servant, the book of John said, a servant will leave the sheep. When the thief comes, he does not care because he's a servant. For the true shepherd will protect the sheep. For us to be prosperous and to be able to do things right, we need to actually ask ourselves, do I belong to Jesus? Am I the father's son? Am I the father's daughter? Because it is the father's son that takes knowledge from the father. So he said, this is a testimony written from by, by uh, uh, Solomon, the book of Proverbs. He said, for I was a confirmation, a declaration. He knew and he knew his place. I was my father's son, tender and the only beloved in the sight of my mother. Why? I hear when they talk and I keep the commandments. So I'm able to gain what is called understanding and wisdom. For no matter how, when we look at our earthly parents, they are always more knowledgeable and full of wisdom than us. Why? Experience of the years. If we have parents that know how to count their days so that they can be able to gain what is called wisdom, then we will not have problems. So are you your father's son? Are you your father's daughter? Are you a beloved to your mother? That is the Holy Ghost. Are you beloved to your mother? Why will I say the Holy Ghost? The Bible tells us that the Holy Ghost is the power of God. That the Holy Ghost is the teacher that teaches us. And what does the Holy Ghost teach us? It teaches us the world and everything that concerns Jesus. It's in wisdom, the ability to do something right is principal thing. You want to accomplish wealth. You want to accomplish your purpose. You want the purpose to be fulfilled. He said, learn how to know how to do things well. Learn how to know how to do things right. For this is the principal thing to all success. The ability to do things in the rightful way. So he calls it the principal thing. So always get wisdom. Always know this principal thing and then get understanding. So what it means is that when you are able to do it right, don't forget how you did it right. That is what is called understanding. Because then when you face the same situation tomorrow, you already knew how to do it and then you will do it well. And when you see something similar, wisdom and knowledge will also tell you that this similar though it looks similar, this is another knowledge again. You have to see and to know how to do this thing right, not putting in your mind, ah, it's just about the same thing that can use the same system. You can't use the same instruction. iPhone 5 is different from iPhone 7. Samsung of the time I came to Europe is different from the Samsung we are using now. The futures are not the same. It is still called Samsung. It is still called iPhone. But the futures are different. We follow the instructions differently. All of them, they are iPhone or Samsung or whatever. But what is inside is different. So we cannot, I cannot use the way I operate Samsung of that time. So we saw that one not be touch screen itself. You have to hit his head. The screen remains constant. It doesn't change. Amen? So I cannot say the way that one is then That is how I will operate. Do you understand what we're saying? So wisdom, the ability to do it right is what is... What I'm saying is this thing is inside you and me. It is what you choose to listen to that you are successful at. Should I repeat that? What you choose to listen to and to pay attention to, that is what you are successful at and in. But 
for us to be the father, son, and daughter, and to be the beloved of the mother, the beloved of the Holy Ghost, so that when the Holy Ghost is directing us and teaching us, we are saying yes, sir. We are saying yes, sir, and doing what he's telling us to do. Because he knows the mind of the father. We will not go amiss. The book of James says, you pray, and you don't receive. Why? Because you pray amiss. Hallelujah. They will not pray amiss in Jesus' name. May God actually help us to understand what we are learning today so that we can be able to use knowledge and have right judgment for us to gain good decisions. Amen? Amen. Even the book of Proverbs 13, 20 says, He that walk with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Meaning that for us to be successful and to do things right, look at everyone that is doing things right. Abby? Be able to know how to analyze knowledge, analyze what you see, analyze what you are able to, what, what, what kind of thing, environment you are experiencing. Who is doing things right? If you are the father's son, if I am the, the father's daughter, and, I, and we are the beloved of our mother, we will be able to know who else is the beloved of the mother. We should be able to know who else is actually the father's son. Don't follow those who don't do things right. Let your companions be those who do things right. And if you want to have association with those who don't do things right, let it now be with limitation. That is also called wisdom. We are talking about doing things right. Why doing things right bring us to success? Doing things right bring us to the expected. He said the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short only when the righteous do things right. I was reading the book of, was it Luke? He said that uh, uh, John has been called, I think he was using John to pray, uh, pray today. John has been called to turn the eyes of the people, when Zechariah, the father was talking, to turn the eyes of the people to the wisdom of the just. I was like, wow. So there is a wisdom that the righteous people will must carry. There is a wisdom for the justified that will help us to be able to be aligned to the instructions of God. And he said unto Joshua, he said, let this word not depart from your mouth. Read it and meditate upon it, day in and day out, so that you will do what you will have a good success. And I keep telling you, success is not success. Success is only success when it's a good one. Amen. That's what the Bible said. For one I did, for one I have money. And say I'm rich, is that success? No, that's not a good success. A success that kills people and destroys other people's lives to rise, that is not success. In the eyes of God, that is stupidity and foolishness. Do you understand what I'm saying? Please do understand, I beg of you. Amen? So Proverbs 13, 20 says, He that walk with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Now we are talking about doing things right. Let's go to the book of which one should I pick now? Because my time don't go again. Hallelujah. I have the story in Second Samuel, and I also have it in uh, in uh, First uh, Chronicles, thirteen and fifteen. Actually, fifteen. But let's go to Second Samuel. In Second Samuel six, from verse one. That story tells us about how. David was going to bring the ark because he has built a place because he has built a place that he wants the ark to rest on and he gathered people he said again David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel 30,000 and David arose and went with all the people that were with him from ba Bale, not Bale, Bale of Judah so bring all from there the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, that dwells between the cherubims. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart. 
take note of that because we we'll see it later in the listing. Upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadad that was in Gibeah, and Uzzah and Ayo, the sons of Abinadad, drove or drove. Yeah. Uh, wow, this one I'm preaching. Drive the new cart. This one I'm preaching English. No, <laughs> drive it. Drive the new cart. This one I'm preaching English. Yeah. That's here yeah, now. Nah. Uh, is it no take? Drive it. Uh, drive drive. That one will drive. Drive now. Nah, this is not nah, drive it. Prevent the new car, like preaching English with that one. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadad, which was at Gibeah, accompanying the ark of God, and Ahio went before the ark. Can we continue? Hallelujah. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all the instruments made of wood, even on house, and on pastory, and on timbers, and on corn, and so and so. And when they came to Nacon Tresh, Treasure floor, who's up who fought his son to the ark and took all of it for the whole sin shook it, and the anchor of the Lord was kindled against Uza, and God smote him there for his error, and there he died by the ark of God. And David was at his place, and David now took the ark and took the ark to the house of Thank you. Obi Say it let them hear. You are right now. Oh, I don't know the call. Oh, 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 so obey it up. And all what we know, we use it to pray often. That God bless obey it up because of the ark that was there. Even just for three months, that ark was there and God prospered the ark. Now, I mean, God prospered the house of obey it up. Now, the question is this How is it that the ark that killed somebody is now blessing someone in the same chapter? What went wrong? What went wrong? What happened? What caused somebody said a filthy hand? Hallelujah. He said the hand was filthy. It could be the reason. Amen. It could be the reason. And it probably might not be the reason. But what we are saying is the ability and the mind to do things right. Now, David, let's go to the book of 1 Chronicles. Let me just do it so that it will be faster. 1 Chronicles 13. Because David was told that ah, this ark has blessed the house of Abedidon. That that guy is getting richer and richer and richer. 13 from 1. And when, when David had it, he started thinking, what went wrong? How can this same hack that killed Uza, the same hack is blessing somebody? And I wanted to bring the hack to my house, to my own place, so that the blessing will be upon me as the king. What have I done wrong? In doing that, he called upon the people of Israel. He called upon them and said, come. Tell me what I have done wrong. The place of the priest, of the pastor, of the Bible. The place of a father. The place of a mother. What have I done wrong? How come that my good intention seems not to work out and my good intention became a failure? Why is it like that? I'm going through this business. I wanted to make money for the kingdom of God. And now the business has scattered. What happened? I saw the face of the Lord. I thought this was my rightful wife. And I married her. I thought this was my husband. And I married him. What went wrong? The act was not a problem. The business was not a problem. The wife was not a problem. The husband was not a problem. The environment. The lack of knowledge, the atmosphere, not following the instructions, 
was what is causing and has caused the problem. Because marriages we have headaches, husband fighting wife. Then before you know, you say, I married the wrong woman. I married the wrong wife. The thing is that they do follow the instructions. I went in our business. Business failed. My intentions were good. What happened? Did we follow the instructions? Do you understand what I'm saying? So, the app, breaking the app. You see that the app was not destroyed. That means that the marriage, what is called marriage distance. Now you want to destroy your home. What is called marriage distance? What is called business distance? Do you understand what I'm saying? The heart was still standing. But the wrong hand that touches the heart died. The wrong things were that was missed. Hey, I like how that one don't give another, 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 another of God, another revelation. Hi, and I will do it to prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Any wrong hand that is missing with your success. Any wrong hand that is adding, coming to bring trouble to your success. May God destroy that hand in Jesus' name. Yeah. May the hand, may the power of God cut off that hand in Jesus' name. We may say that God is wicked to Husa. No! Husa was ignorant of what he did because he himself, that is why I like the book, the people of Thessalonians in the New Testament. Even Paul said, I love the people of Thessalonians. Why? He said that. Is it Thessalonians now? Or I mean Macedonia. Yeah, go and check your Bible. He said they will go back to Macedonia people. He said they will go back to search the scripture to know if that which Paul has taught them, if that which they heard from the apostle, if that which they are hearing from them, if it is the truth. They did not just hear and start going muku to go and start doing anything. No, they go and read it themselves so that they will know how to do what? Do it right. Uza so much believe what? Believe so much in David. And he believes so much that David cannot make mistake. Some of you will think that Rachel cannot make mistake. And you replace Rachel with, with your God, which is very, very evil. Uza looked at David and replaced David to be his God. That whatever David says stands. Remember the Bible said the word of a king stands sure. That was the kind of mentality he has. But he does not know that God, the Bible was not referring to earthly king, but referring to the king of kings. Because earthly king can still make mistakes. So Uza did not go and ask if I might permitted by law. Am I permitted by the instructions of God to carry the ark? To carry this ark, am I permitted? He did not source the rightful knowledge. That is one thing that put us in trouble. Me, like trusting people with the whole of our hearts. Trusting people. Trusting people and keep trusting people and they just keep molding me. German word that said trust is good but control is better. It's, there's only wrong in trusting. After the Bible said those who trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion, but not those who trust in people. He said Tru some trust in Sharos, Tru some trust in the Hamid, but we trust in the name of the Lord. There is a trusting that keeps you standing, and there is a trusting that can fall you. Who has so much trusted King, King uh, uh, David? Uh, David. And he went carrying the ark. They were going when he saw that the ark was shaking because they were climbing at him. That is like it's like climbing to the next level in spiritual realm when he does not have the capacity. So when they climbed and he was not having the capacity, he touched. He thought he wanted to help, but the anointing was not in him to hold that thing. That was why what he said was right. The anointing in him was not strong enough to hold the ark. He died. Because that same ark was in the house of Abedino. And the same ark was blessing Abedino. Who said that? Because they were not carrying the ark according to instruction. They were not doing it right. 
When David found out, he went and he sought the priest, and the priest said, Ordinary people are not supposed to touch the ark. It is the juicy ones that are supposed to touch the ark. If you want to carry that ark and transfer the ark from that place to this place, he said, Let the rightful people carry the ark. And who are the rightful people that should carry the ark? The Levites and the priests. Because when the ark was being constructed in the book of Exodus, even God said, don't touch the ark. Rather, put wood. I just have to explain it now because time don't go. Put wood from one side to the other side so that people will use that wood to carry, to carry it and not a cat. A cat is a horse. And any horse is galloping, won't it gallop? So that was what happened. So the horse was galloping, going up, and of course then the 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 the, 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 the ark started falling back because when you are climbing up, it will it, it will rush, it will slip. But if you are holding it, the one who is in front, if you are climbing up, will take his hand down, and the one behind will carry it up. God knows. So he gave the instruction on how to carry it. But who's that? That is like what happened to us. Who do we allow to enter into our business, into our marriage, into our life? Those who we trust, do they seek the face of God concerning what we trust them about? Uza did not seek for instruction to know if he is allowed to touch that heart, if he is allowed to carry the heart. But because pastor said, he started carrying it. Because the king spoke, he just started running with it. Reason at times why we see that prophecies fail in our lives. The word has been declared, but we don't know how to run with the word, how to seek the face of God personally to know what to do concerning that prophecy, concerning that word. We just go zugu zugu. My own example trusted my brother. He trusted somebody else. And I didn't put the other person in prayer. At the end of the day, what happened? It flops. When I think through it, I don't have anybody to blame. I say, I'm the one that made a mistake. Because don't think that because you trusted this one and prayed and you saw that it will work with this person. Does not mean that the one that that one is the forfeit that you don't pray also. You get what I'm saying. Some of us we involve other people in our homes, and that is what destroys our home. Bible says, husband, love your wife. Wife, respect your husband. At times, wife will say until he loves me, I will not respect him. Husband will say until he, he she loves that uh, she respect me, I will not love her. Yet the instruction is love. The instruction is respect. He didn't tell you to choose when to do it. He said, do it always. Simple instruction. And we don't follow it, it, it causes problem. We want to do something, we should learn how to do it right. When David now learned how to do it right, he called the priest. They carried it with the right hook. Where God said, carry it. And because they carried it, they passed that same hill. They were celebrating, they were dancing, and they brought the heart to Jerusalem. Ignorance is not an excuse. Once it is not done well, it is not done well. Did you hear what I said? Yes. When we say, I didn't know, the fact is that, now you go see so far. We made so many mistakes because we are not wise enough to pay attention to what we should pay attention to. And that is why we suffer so many things that we ought not to suffer. We don't pay attention to the things that we ought to pay attention to. We don't learn enough. We don't gather knowledge enough. And it is destructive. I'm talking to us, including myself. Everything we are going to do, if we don't gather enough knowledge, we will surely make mistakes. Don't rush. Take your time. Take your time. Even in your home, take your time. 
Don't rush into decision. Wisdom is being able to take good decision, to have good judgment on time. I, 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 I good uh, uh, judgment at the rightful time. It's not a matter of David did not carry the ark at the rightful time. It was the matter of he didn't do it well. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And he did the right thing the wrong way, which I've already explained. Gather information that you need to gather well. When you have knowledge, confidence is built in you. Like what we have learned before. When you have knowledge, confidence is built, with, uh, built in you. And after you have applied wisdom, you say, get understanding. I've said it before so that you know how to do it again. Don't miss this up. And God will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want us to do a small prayer. Because then don't go we'll continue. I, didn't, I don't even plan of doing this next week. But it's like, uh, somehow, I'm going to still do it next week. Amen? Amen. Remember in the book of 1 Samuel 30, when they were to go and fight the Philistines, David learned something from all these things that happened. What did David learn? The Bible said that the people were crying and they want to kill David because their wives and their properties were taken away, including that of David. That is why you blame people unnecessarily. David had his own problem, but his own wife was taken away. His own proper, his wife were taken away on properties. But because he was your guy, so why did they, 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 they all cry? They said they are going to destroy him. In that midst of storm and turbulence, David has learned a hard lesson. Not to do anything again to fail. He went to the face of God. He prayed prayer. He said, Father, see what has happened. Even though his wife and property and that of the community has been taken. He said, this battle, should I go? Should I fight it? Not be everything when you do crack, 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 crack. Why are you going to treat her like that? Why are you going to ask you? Not be everything you go pull out. No pull out for everything. Not be everything consign you when it can consign you. No pull out for everything. Don't be busy, buddy. We learned it last two weeks. Don't pull out if what does not concern you. If you do, it concerns you. Are you getting me? That means we should always try to ask God. They think that's what his wives and children were taking along with others. They think, say, God, should I go in this part? You would think that he does not care for his wife and his children. He did. But he has to ask first. How do you want us to go about this thing? How do you want us? And this is always the responsibility, mostly of the husbands. Some of you, you are too lazy as men. You are too lazy. There was a time I met someone and I so much like, from all what discussion that was going on on that day, I heard something that the woman said. He said, she be saying, no, I have to pray. Make it a prayer now. That sweetened my heart, eh? It's sweet in my heart, eh? The person don't know. It take a mercy happy. But I say, thank God, because that is how it should be. If all the men in this ministry will be able to pray and your wife will say, you are even praying too much. You can imagine what the kingdom of God will be. He said, men ought to pray. Not faint. Men ought to pray and not faint. Men ought to pray and not faint. Her leader and ego. They feel that part. He was also in the midst of the storm. He knelt down and prayed. He said, God, how will I go? Should I go after them? Should I pursue? Should I go and overtake them? God said, not only should you pursue, not only will I be with you to overtake, but you are going to recover everything that you have lost. Amen. The responsibility of a father 
whose song will be able to listen to. The responsibility of a mother whose song will become a beloved in her sight. Even in the storm, seek the face of God. Even when your children are misbehaving, seek the face of God. I tell you people things again and again. Your own still small. Look at my own. If you see any mistake here, yeah, you sit, tell your children, correct. If you see the one that is good, use it as an example to train your own children. Be wise and gather themselves with things that are wise and they become wise. How can I get all the things why I talk small, small? David became wiser, he prayed, and God gave him victory. Because the hack is a place of prayer. The same thing for you, the same thing for me. Pray always, do the right thing. Let us not follow the world. For fellowship with the world is destruction. For fellowship with God is beauty, is glory, is joy. So let us learn to follow the instructions of God so that indeed we will prove and bring glory to God that we are his son and we are the beloved of